Next, we're going to talk about cursors. Now, let me ask you about your experience in RPG when you read the data from a database. When you read the data from the database, the database sends the data over to an RPG program. Where does that program keeps that data? Data structure. What is it? Data structure. Okay. Now, the entire data is sitting in the data structure, and how are you reading that data? Record by record? Okay. So now... It is the programming end which never brings the entire data into your program all at once. Rather, it stages it in a temporary memory from where you can read record by record or field by field. Now, when you're doing the same thing in a stored procedure where the data is brought from a table or tables into a stored procedure, it doesn't read everything at once. Rather, it stores it in a staging area called cursor. And then you can ask the cursor to read the data for you. So we're going to be doing our examples till the end of today's class with cursors. Okay? So there are many ways to read cursors because cursors can be based on an SQL statement that returns a single result back or can return multiple results back. So the number of results that are coming to you, and now it's up to you how you want to read it, because in a multi uh, in a multi record select statement, you need to run a loop because you can only only read one record at a time. But in a single result set, you don't need a loop because, for example, if you say I want to get the title of the book whose ISBN number is this, you know that there'll be only one book with that ISBN number. So only one one re record will be returned. You don't need a loop to read through it. But if you say give me all the books in computer category, now you get so many books to read, so now you need a cursor to go through it. So we're going to be looking into cursors. So in order to work with this, let's put some comments here. If select statement returns more than one record, those records are kept in in a cursor then we read the records from the cursor so let's create a table create table title books Title, character, 100. Create or replace procedure, move multi valves. Now we are instructing it that we are interested in a single result set, not multi-result sets. So one result set should be returned. Language is SQL. Begin, end. Declare is a statement that we use in stored procedure anytime you need to declare something. Last time we learned in order for you to declare a variable, you use a declare statement. In order for you to assign a value to a variable, which command do we use? Set. Set. So all statements start with a command. So declare command to declare variables and also to declare cursors, anything that needs to be declared. So I'm, I'm declaring a cursor called cursor1. The data type of this cursor one is cursor. So cursor is actually a data type. Four. So I'm declaring a cursor one, which is a cursor. And why am I declaring it for this cursor? To select the title from the books table where the cost is equals to 1875. Now, I would like you to go back to your books table 
in Navigator and see and just pick one of the book's price. Means pick a price that there is only book one book for that price. So that we can get to see how a single data or single record can be read. So take a moment, look at your table, books table in your navigator, look at a price of a book such that there should be only one book that has that cost and put that number over here in place of 1875. If there is one 1875 then that's fine once the data has been brought into my program I now need to read the data now let's let's go back to some file handling that you that you have learned in your file handling classes that in order for you to write data to a file, the first thing that you do is you establish an object which can tap into the file. And then what you do, you open the file. And then you do is you perform the read-write operation. So the cursor is holding the data. Now I need to open the cursor. Once I open the cursor, now I need to fetch from the cursor into, now I'm going to stop over here and I'm going to go up and finish some of my code and then come back and then complete this code. So whenever the cursor taps into the data set or the record, you need to look at how many fields are you reading. So how many fields am I reading on line 52? How many fields am I reading on line 52? Just one. So that means only one data will be returned per record. So however many data items I'm reading, I'm going to declare those many variables. So let me declare a variable. And again, you see that we have used a declare statement. And this is all the variables are declared in stored procedure. Declare, variable name, data type. If the data type is not fixed, then you got to write the size. And usually, the type has to be the same as the field that you're reading, and the size has to be compatible. Now, once you do this, now I'm back on line 57. I'll fetch from the cursor and I'm going to read the value into value underscore var. Fetch the value out of the cursor, read it into this variable, and now once that happens, I'm going to take this data, go to title books, and enter this over there. So again, I create a cursor, which is tied to an SQL statement. When that SQL statement runs, it generates an output. In order for you to read that output, you got to open the cursor, then fetch the record or results, and then you can do whatever you want to do. Here, I'm fetching it and putting it as a data in another table. Now you compile this stored procedure, then you call this stored procedure. And then once you are done calling the stored procedure, I want you to go to title books and check to see that the title has moved from the books table into the title books table. 